Good morning. It's time to talk Suzuki. I'm Jake Boomer with Lemonot Marine. And we're going to talk about that. I think it's kind of one of the biggest conversations in the outboard market and the boating market. And so I want to kind of give my pros and cons to this motor now that I've had it since the end of April, early May, and put 70 hours on it. I think I can speak to, you know, a lot of the questions. I get asked a ton of questions about it since I've had it. But I can speak to a, a lot of the pros and cons to this motor, how it fits in our industry, how it fits for you guys that are thinking about repowering over buying new boats, especially with the interest rates. So I kind of want to go over the pros and cons real quick. We'll talk about it a little bit. Um, let's start with the cons though, because I think that the number one question I get every time somebody sees this motor, they love it. They think it looks awesome. It does look dope. It's a pretty cool motor, uh, all blacked out. Um, but the number one question after that is, how much speed did you lose and so yes number one i lost probably two and a half miles an hour to three sometimes i only lose about two but top end speed i'm down about two miles an hour and this is a phoenix 921 pro xp so it was always a 71 72 mile an hour boat so now i run around 69 to 70 depending on elevation you know load all that kind of stuff um, but it just doesn't seem to really affect my tournament fishing so i don't really worry about it that much i mean 69 to 70 if you really want to go fast you should be running a bass cat or an allison right but if i can go 70 with the 21 foot boat i'm pretty i'm pretty happy but yes you're gonna lose top end speed and a lot of that comes from the way they prop the motor and we'll talk about gear ratios this has a really we not weird but different gear ratio compared to everything in the market and number two it comes from uh tuning like a lot of these boats, a lot of your outboard manufacturers will get into the power race and they'll overpower. They'll use different computer settings to overpower their motors. Suzuki doesn't play that game. They always, if it says 250, it's a 250. And I think a lot of that has impacted the way this particular motor will perform on a boat that's a, another one with a different outboard, with a different manufacturer may go a little bit faster. Irregardless, you're going to lose about two miles an hour. I think that's probably the biggest negative with the boat but i promise you that i think that pr the pros about this motor have completely uh wiped out that that factor the second con to this motor is it's heavier and um, we haven't weighed it yet i've heard all kinds of rumors that other manufacturers when they put a published size of their motor out they um they may weigh them without the cowling or they may weigh them without the lower unit or they may weigh them dry i don't know this motor is about 100 pounds heavier than the motor I had before. It'd be like if you put a Verado on the back of your boat. The Verados were pretty heavy because they had a supercharger on them. This particular motor, it weighs in like at 625, I think. I thought that would have a huge difference for the attitude of my boat, the way it would run in the water. It just doesn't seem like it has. This boat has been repowered, so I'll just give you guys a quick update. This is a 29, This is my 2019 Phoenix 921 Pro XP. And instead of rolling it over and getting a 2023 boat, I was given the opportunity to repower. Limit Out Marine is now a Suzuki dealership, which was really cool the way that worked out. And so instead of buying a new boat this year, I repowered. So that's how this all came about. But before I was going to like put a big video out about what's the best boat or what's the best motor and all that other stuff, I wanted to put some time on it. So I put 70 hours on this. I beat the crap out of it. I've taken it to Lake Almanor in 5,200 feet elevation and Lake Powell, the Columbia River, and some nasty stuff. So I feel like I can actually talk about this motor now uh, and be a little bit more relevant about what I'm dealing with. So let's go through the pros now. So we know it's heavier. We know it's a little slower. Here's the pros that will wipe out all that stuff in your mind. The number one pro to this motor is that you can stink and get it. <laughs> In our industry right now, if you blow a power head, you're almost forced into buying a brand new boat. I mean, if you blow some power heads, they're like $14,000. You, you don't have a repower option because we can't, as a dealer, and a lot of the dealers locally, can get repower motors for you. We can't get you some of the motors that would just bolt right on the back and let you start all over. Suzuki, on the other hand, we got them in stock. We've got this, this uh, digital 250 in stock, and we can hang them in a week. Uh, I'll show you some video a little bit later of uh, with, with uh, Blake Lesher, Ninja 2.0, our, our rigging machine. The dude's been hanging them all summer long. He's a pro at it. He's put them on Rangers. He's put them on Phoenixes, Bass Cats. He knows, how, he knows all the tricks and how to get them on there. So number one, we can actually get these motors and hang them for you. So that's pro number one. If you've been sitting around trying to decide what you're going to do, you now have an option. Pro number two with this motor is that it's priced right. It comes with a five-year warranty. Um, 
they haven't taken a bunch of price increases in the last couple of years. If you're kidding a digital motor with arguably some of the best reliability ratings in the industry, a uh, five-year warranty, you don't have to pay extra for that, and it's affordable. I think that's kind of cool because generally these extended warranties are getting pretty expensive. They add two to $3,000 to your motor purchase. So enough with the uncool stuff. So pro number three, the thing I really love about this motor is gas mileage. And I know that sounds dumb. I know that ages me or dates me as an old man, uh, but I've been fishing a long time, 15 years, and gas prices have an impact on travel, on tournaments that you choose to do, just all of that stuff. Gas has is, is gotta be part of the conversation. Since I've got this motor, no BS, I've tracked it. It's about 18 to 22% better in fuel efficiency than stuff I've ran in the past. I don't know if that has to do with the way they, uh, the EFI, the computer, any of that kind of stuff. I actually think it has something to do with the way they run the gear ratio on this boat. And we'll get into that. I think that's gonna be pro number three, but as far as running around, I ran 190 miles round trip at Lake Powell last week. I burned 39 gallons of gas. I can track that with the SMG gauge. I'll show you guys that super cool technology because this motor is so digital. They, they give you a lot of functions and features in the gauges. But that was pretty epic. I think I, my average speed was about 54 miles an hour, but I ran forever. And I just couldn't, I, I mean, we'd be in super careful, but I just didn't bottom the tank out. So that's pro number two is, or three is gas mileage. To pro number four, number four. Uh, this motor, and I'll show you in some other videos, I've also got Blake Lesher to talk about it a little bit. This motor has two gear reductions in it. Not one like normal motors. Norm normal motors have a gear reduction in the lower unit. So for instance, a lot of other brands are 175 to one. So that means the, the outboard, the power head turns around 1.75 times to one propeller turn. This motor is a two and a half to one. And the way they pull that off is they have a gear reduction in the very bottom of the motor. So there's one gear reduction. And then they have the gear reduction in the lower unit. What that actually means to you when you're running your boat, and it's taken me a while to kind of figure it out is this boat, when I had the other brand on here, I ran a 25 or a 24 pitch for almost everything. Now I run a 26 and a 27. And what that's done is it's kind of like if you guys buy the pickup trucks and you put big tires on them. Sometimes if your tires are too big, you have to use it. You have to lower your gear ratio and your rear end so that you can turn those tires over. So the motor can actually be in the power band when it's turning that big tire over. Well, the benefit on a bass boat is I can turn a 27 because I have a lower gear ratio motor 27 pitch prop, but I'm not gaining the extra weight like you wouldn't have pickup. The, the extra weight of turning that tire over because tires are bigger, the bigger tires are heavier with all the compressed air in them and all that stuff. But I'm really just turning over a bigger pitch prop because I have a lower gear ratio. So what I'm getting with that is I get a lot of power and a big prop, generally a 27 pitch, like this is a 27 pitch Scorpion. I get a lot of stern lift and I get a lot of forward movement. I think that's where the gas mileage is coming from. I'm turning a 27 at 4,400 RPM going 49 miles an hour and I'm, and it's just not even working. So because it's lower geared and I can turn that bigger prop over, I think that's why I'm getting better gas mileage. The second benefit of that lower gear ratio is rough water. Because this thing is lower geared, I'm turning over a bigger prop. I have more stern lift. The boat sits flat in rough water. The benefit of that is that, and I'm in rough water, I'm in the power band with that big prop, and I'm actually able to keep the boat flat instead of falling down and climbing through the waves because I'm out of that power band, <laughs> this stinking motor, I sit flat, I can go anywhere. I had it loaded on the Columbia River in some bad water, and I, I couldn't believe how well I could drive around. I honestly think that if you're in the Great Lakes, if you're a big smallmouth fisherman in the north, Thousand Islands, this is the stinking motor you should be looking at because not only will you get the gas mileage and the reliability if you're 60, 80, yard, 80 miles offshore, but you're gonna get the best rough water ride I've ever had. And I'm, and I'm not exaggerating, I've run everything. I've got all the four bait pops, I've, I've had all the motors. This is probably the best rough water motor and I think it's because of the gearing. I really do, I can turn a big blade prop, but I'm in the power band while I'm doing it and I just, I literally run around stuff. I don't fall down into the troughs anymore. I kind of can just drive around the troughs. So that was a really big one for me. I didn't know that that would be a benefit. I didn't know it until I got in some really rough water in the, on the Columbia River. Um, but I mean, take that into your consideration. But that's, that's pro number four.
uh, super high elevation, I turn a 26 scorpion. Lower elevation, I turn a 27. So like on the Columbia River, I turn a 27 scorpion three blade. We haven't tried too many four blades. I'm not a huge four blade fan, unless I'm in really rough water, but I won't buy a four blade for this motor in rough water because you don't need it. Just put the 27 on, you'll be in the power band with that huge prop and you'll just be able to walk all over the place. Pretty cool. That's pro number four. Fifth pro, last one I've got because I've talked about a lot of stuff, but fifth pro is all the digital stuff. This motor is digital and I'm not a big fan of that kind of stuff. I've got an engineering background. I generally think that when we overcomplicate things, we lead to more points of failure, right? More digital stuff, more automatic shifting, more uh, stuff that makes things really cool up front gives you another point of failure. And if you don't make a way in, you're screwed, right? Like miss a way in in the opens and your whole season's over because of something electronic. So I'm not a big fan of electronic, digital fly-by-wire. I don't, I don't like any of that crap. I like a cable, puts it in gear, it goes. But th with Suzuki, it's a little different. I think that they pride themselves on reliability. I think they're known for reliability. They build primarily for the offshore market, which I, in my opinion, they own. And so they don't screw around with digital stuff. I've had no problems with the digital uh, components in this boat. No weird things that happen, like accidentally won't go in gear or any of that crap. But what I do get with it is awesome features like I can switch between my foot pedal and my throttle back and forth with just a touch of the button. So if you've got a 100 mile run or a 90 mile run and you don't want to hold your foot on the pedal the whole time, you just push a button and use the gimbal or give, use the throttle. It just switches back and forth. Take it out of gear, she can come off pad, take it out of gear, hit the button, bang, you're back into using the pedal for rough water or whatever you want to do if you're boat racing. So that, that feature alone is amazing. Plus the integration with all of the digital the gauges, the Suzuki gauge system that comes in plugs right into your NEMA network. So it's actually using the GPS puck off of my hummingbirds because it's all part of the NEMA network. So I'm getting actual real miles per gallon on my boat. It's actually calculating the miles per gallon I get. So if you're making long runs, the computer's telling you you're getting four miles of the gallon or three miles of the gallon, which is pretty awesome. On top of that, it also tells you how much fuel you burned. Those kind of things help you make better decisions on the water when you're especially when you're in a big tournament and kind of take some of that extra processing that you need in your head and let you think about the fishing so this motor's been by the time by the way like i don't know if you can hear it but this motor's been running most of the time i've had this video going because i wanted to show you how quiet it is i'll also do a couple that we'll, we'll hop on pad here and show you what it gets on pad like it's just i would say if you're trying to figure out what this motor is going to be like compared to what you're dealing with right now it'd be like if you had a gas pickup truck pulling your boat and then you got a diesel. That, that's what I think the difference is. It doesn't roar out of the hole. It just gets on pad easy. You know what I mean? It doesn't, it's just quite a bit more docile. And I think it has to do with the, that. It's a big block power head and it's got the right gearing. So. I got Blakester here, Blake Lesher, Limit Out Marine, a uh, professional rigging extraordinaire. And he has the motor here, and he's just gonna show you how awesome, why he likes it for installation. Here's the beauty of repowering one of these. Here's your three cables that come out of the motor. Well, two cables and fuel. That's all you need right there. There's no control cables, there's nothing else. This is it. That's all you need to repower this thing. You run this through your rigging tube into the boat, you're done. Keeps rigging costs down, you think? Quite a bit, because running control cables through a boat is difficult, plus the cost of cables. Um, trying to get the everything into the rigging tube and done just right. And it, it, this turns out super clean, too. I mean, you can see over there how clean the rigging tube is and everything. It just makes it a super clean install. <clears throat> I like these a lot better than doing a mechanical motor, for sure. <laughs> All right. Uh, I found another pro I like about this motor. This motor actually comes with two charge leads. It comes with the charge lead for the main battery and comes with what they call house battery, right? Yeah, auxiliary charge. Right, so like on offshore boats, they charge a house battery. It has nothing to do with uh, any of the uh, starting motor battery. Well, in our world, now that we're using 
lithium batteries to charge all or to run all of our electronics a lot of times guys are separating them which is what i did so this motor is charging my lithium graph battery which i'll show you here uh, so this is my the battery uh, closest to you here is running my electronics the battery in the back is my trolling motor battery so i have this lead here wire coming from the boat which is awesome at f i think it's 40 amps 40 amps? I believe it's a 40 amp. Yeah, lead. which is awesome. And then on top of that, I'm charging just my straight up battery. Like I said, I like the digital part of it. I love the fact that, like you talked about with changing from throttle control to foot control, vice versa with the push of a button. That's heaven. Um, the gauge is ultra cool. I mean, the way it ties into any of your graphs, you don't need you know any kind of vessel view or anything like that. It's built into the system. Uh, via NEMA, via so NEMA. you tie it right into your any any electronics you need. You can have information off of that into your gauges or vice versa. So can you tie those gauges right into your NEMA system that's already in the boat? If yep. you have it ties right in. It recognizes. I've, I've had it recognize the Humminbird antenna. I've had it recognize the Lawrence antenna. I mean, there's no even programming. It just pops right up. It recognizes right. it right away. So, well, and, and the other thing it does for you too is, as far as speed goes, it, yeah, it's, it speeds there, but it also gives you your true miles per gallon because it's tracking GPS wise how far you've gone and how your fuel burn at the same time. So, it can give you true miles per gallon because of tying into your antenna. If, you, if you're interested in a Suzuki, if you're in that position where you need to repower, or you're thinking about it, maybe you got a great boat, but maybe your motor's really tired, call Limit Out Marine. Call Blake Lesher, call Chris Ferry, call Russ Baker. We've been doing it since April. We've hung a ton of these things. It's a really cool power option for you guys. It'll get you back on the water and it'll add five years warranty free running on your boat. So anyways, check it out. Thanks for watching guys. Check us out at LimitOutMarine.com.